This has been produced by umunu.com. I just don't like people putting their hands in my pockets. I'm not an American. The subject of what I'm going to talk about today is the influence of intelligence on politics. Um, that's the general term. I, I'm going to speak more specific about the influence of Mossad on, on your government. And what does that entail? Now, any further, let me explain to you where I come from, in my opinion. I believe in the right of the State of Israel to be a state. I believe in the freedoms of the Israeli citizens to have those freedoms and their right to have those freedoms. I believe in the fact that there should be, as Balfour has declared, a home for the Jewish people in the land of Palestine which has a second part to it without impeding the rights of the indigenous population there. Now that's maybe where I differ from a lot of other people in the fact that I do believe that people have rights wherever they are. I should go a little bit further back. In the creation of the State of Israel, Zionism stands for really not a religious state, it looks at Israel as a, Zionism is, is a secular movement. It's a movement to bring the Jewish people and give them a home in the land of Israel. It is not a messianic movement. Because if we go to messianic movements and we go back to the Bible and we go back to those people who are extremely religious in Israel, they'll tell you that they're anti-Zionist because they say we as Jews cannot go back to Israel unless we fulfill what's said in the Bible, which means wait until the Messiah comes and brings you back. So if we go back as a religious group, we have no rights to the land. So there's a contradiction right there that a lot of people can't live with, and they have a problem with that. Now, if you look at the KGB, for example, or, or the CIA for that matter, you'll find out that they have hundreds of thousands of people working for them as, a, as an infrastructure. They can't operate, an intelligence agency cannot operate without an infrastructure. Just to give you an example, let's assume you have a station in London. In order to have a station in London, what do you need? You need doctors, you need drivers, you need cars, you need apartments, you need people who buy food, who sell food, you need people who get you tickets, you, get, you need a lot of people around the actual operatives. The guy who goes up and recruits somebody needs a lot of backing. He can't do it on his own. The Mossad is very small. We're talking about an organization that has about 1,200 people, including secretaries and drivers. Now, how do you spread that across the entire world that you have to gather information from? Because you see, a Mossad cannot have a station in Damascus, because it has no embassy there. So you cannot have an open station. So what you do is this. You open a station in London with five guys. Five, sorry. That's the Mossad sign for five. <laughs> These five guys are the actual case officers. Then what you do is you get people to come from Israel and they scout the country and they come up with a lot of names of the Jewish community in London. And these guys then go out and they'll approach a doctor a Jewish doctor in London, and I say to him, listen, we need your help in order to save Jews elsewhere. And we, will, we might be turning to you. Will you be helpful to us? 70% turn them down, but nobody will ever turn them in. And that's a very important factor. So you can go to another guy and another guy and another guy. Before you know it, you've got 300, 400 people in London who are supporting the station. You need a car, you pick up the phone, you say, Mr. So-and-so, I need a car. I don't need it registered. An hour later, you can pick up the car. I need a safe house. Two hours later, you have a safe house. I need a doctor. I need tickets. 
I need transportation. I need $300,000 in an hour at 12 o'clock at night. So you get a banker who opens the bank and he takes it out because he knows two days from now the money's going to be back. We're good for it. Now the money's going to be back.